Bob, thank you for the kind introduction. Thank you for the invitation to be with you. I thank you for your friendship, your leadership at Blue Cross and on the New Schools Project. Uh, thanks to the Blue Cross Foundation for that challenge. That is absolutely marvelous. It's great to be here with my good friend, Dr. Victor Zhao. Victor does so many wonderful things in so many arenas. It's amazing all that he does do, and I appreciate all that he is doing and Duke Health Systems is doing with the City of Medicine Academy. It is a wonderful public-private partnership that we can all be very, very proud of. I appreciate each and every one of you being here. It is absolutely critical. It is critical to the success and survival of the United States of America. Now, I know you didn't know it was going to be that heavy, and you said that's awfully, uh, lo that's a lot of hyperbole, but he's a politician. I expect that kind of exaggeration. Well, maybe so and maybe not. You know, Yogi Berra, the great baseball player, had a way with words, and Yogi used to say, you know, the future isn't what it used to be. Well, that is absolutely true. The future is not what it used to be. The United States arguably is the most su successful nation in the history of the world, and sometimes we take that success for granted. But if you look at the causes of that success, it's somewhat humbling. Benchmark it in 1950, we got a 25 to 30 year head start on all the rest of the world because the rest of the world was devastated by World War II. They had to rebuild their infrastructure. They had to start from ground zero. We did not have that problem with devastation on our homeland. And we also had a governance structure with democracy that encouraged free thought and entrepreneurship. We had a capitalistic economy, and we had the GIs coming back, and we had something called the baby boom that would drive our economy decade after decade. In fact, if you look and fast forward to the 1990s even, the baby boomers were at the height of their buying power. China and India were not really factors so much at that time. We were ahead in the dot-com industry and everything was going well. But today, those baby boomers are at the height of their entitlement power. And China and India are very much factors. In fact, China just became the number two economy in the world. And the future has changed for all of us. And we have to step up and change education. We are flooded by knowledge today. 1.5 exabytes of unique new information will be generated this year. What is that? I don't know. You, you dot com people know what an exabyte is. But I can tell you this, it is equal to all the unique new information generated within the last 5,000 years. That's the reason we need to change education. You can teach them facts and figures, but that is very rapidly going to evolve or, or become obsolete. We have to teach children to think. We have to teach them to analyze. We have to teach them to problem solve. We have to teach them to work in teams because that is what a knowledge-based economy is all about. You know, FDR probably had the toughest time in our history going through the Great Depression and going through World War II. But he remembered what his high school principal, Principal Sher, he remembered what his high school principal told him. And that principle said, regardless of the peaks and valleys in history, the chart of history is always toward advancement and progress. And that is true, but the key to that advancement and progress generally is rooted in a STEM education. Science, technology, engineering, and math. The automobile, the airplane, the internet, the computer. Those are the things that drive our economy. That's why we have to foster this new generation of students and get them versed and get them excited about a STEM education. Even in the, if you listen to Tom Brokaw, he talks about the 1960s. He said, you know, you had the civil rights movement and you had Vietnam and it was a disruptive time, but it was landing that man on the moon that gave the country an uplift. And again, STEM education is so important. That's the reason I, introduced and passed the 2003 Innovative Education Act that Bob so kindly mentioned. It gave a foundation for the creation of early colleges in North Carolina and redesigned high schools. And because of the good work of Tony Habit and the New Schools Project and Faye Agar and Scott Rawls and Howard Lee and others, we've been very successful in that. A, an early college is a five-year program. It's a collaboration between an institution of higher education and a public school. 
And rather than looking a, at a four-year traditional high school diploma, because everybody says today you're going to need more than a high school diploma, if that's so, why do we even talk about it? Let's have a five-year program where at the end of five years you have a technical degree or a two-year associate's degree ready to enter the workforce or go on and get a four-year degree. Because of their work, we have been very, very successful with that endeavor. North Carolina is a leader in the early college movement. We have one-third of the early colleges in the nation. 10,500 students in the early colleges. Most of those are first generation. We have 71 early colleges in North Carolina today. Harvard gave us an award for innovation in education, largely because of the redesigned schools and the early colleges. The New York Times about three months ago said, North Carolina's early college model is a model for the nation. So we're very proud of that. The Jobs Commission, which Bob also mentioned, stands for joining our businesses and our schools. I ask that the legislature pass that because that's going to be the key, these public-private partnerships, getting private business and industry involved. I've always said that education is market-driven. Education responds to the need of the workforce. The workforce has changed. It's knowledge base. So we need to involve businesses. Let them have some input on curriculum. We want internships for our students, externships for our teachers so they can go into the business, learn about the business, and take practical experience back into the classroom. The Jobs Commission is looking at regional economies because different regions of the state, the economies may differ. Hospitality and tourism may be, be, may be big one place, aerospace another. But STEM is not indigenous to any area. STEM is absolutely critical to every part of our state, and that is what is so wonderful about this endeavor. We talk about the health care crisis. Well, one way to help solve the health care crisis is to create more doctors and nurses and get more people interested in the health care field. Also, in the uh, innovation and in, uh, inventing new drugs, we need more top students like that that will get involved. But STEM is important to every in, uh, occupation out there today, whether it be auto mechanics, builders, landscapers. That's why the City of Medicine Academy is so important. It's an autonomous school. It is challenging. It takes a blended career tech and academic courses. It's project-based. It's problem-based learning, and it's innovative, and it's bold. So, Principal Scheer, I applaud you and your staff, and Victor, I applaud you and Duke Health Systems for all that you are doing. It's going to be a North Carolina model that we want to build out to all areas of North Carolina, but I think it will be a national model. We are going to rebrand education with what we do and what you do in this room. And no place better to rebrand it than start in Durham, North Carolina, because this was a tobacco town. Nothing but a tobacco town. I mean, that's the way it was always seen. And now it is the city of medicine and it is the city of medicine in a very real way. I can tell you that when, when we rebrand education, if you can take this model and put this excellence in the rural parts of the state, you do a lot of things. One, if you have a brand, whether it be the Duke logo or some other logo that it's arrived upon that people understand as excellence, number one, you will have the student's expectation increased dramatically. Now all of a sudden they have this presence of something excellent and they're looking at something beyond just getting out of school. The other thing you help is economic development because when new companies come and they see that symbol, they want to know what is that? And they say it's a link to Duke Medicine Academy and it's a statewide initiative. We're focusing on STEM. We're preparing our students for jobs of the future. It helps North Carolina in many, many ways with that rebranding. Re so I started with a quote from Yogi. I'll conclude with one from Yoda, from Star Wars. Yoda said, "You do, or you not. You do, or you not do. There is no try. There's no try about this. We either do it, and we succeed, and we prepare for the 21st century economy, and we'll be able to compete with the world, or we fall behind, and we will not be able to compete." So that is why I'm so happy that all of you are here today, great education leaders and leaders of business and industry throughout North Carolina. Great to be here with education leaders like Dr. Gene Atkinson, our superintendent, and my mentor, Howard Lee, back there, and also Dr. Bill Harrison. Bill is uh, certainly the chair of our State Board of Education. He is the education advisor to the, the governor. He is working on that implementation of the uh, Race to the Top money. 
Bill has been a superintendent at small schools, small school systems, and at one of the largest school systems in our state with Cumberland County Schools. Everywhere Bill Harrison has ever been, he has been successful and has obtained excellent results. So it is my honor and privilege to welcome to the podium Dr. Bill Harrison, the chair of the State Board of Education. 